mic check, mic check, one, two. All right, guys, in this video, what I want to do is I want to show you guys how to make a word counter. And what this is basically going to do is it's going to go through a web page, and you can actually use it even if you have like a text file or I don't know, any document. But I'm just going to show you guys how to crawl a web page, get all the words on there. And what it's going to do is it's going to show you guys how frequently each word is used. Now, search engines actually do this a lot in um, maybe you have an ad network that you're building and you want to display ads that are relevant to the content on the web pages. So not only is this really interesting, but it's useful in a lot of situations as well. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to import requests. And of course, we need this for whenever we connect to a URL and get information from it, pretty much to download information from a web page. We're going to request that information, not just demand it, you know, got to be nice about it. And the next thing we're going to do is import beautiful soup. Remember, whenever we want to scrape or um, pick out certain pieces of the web page, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about right here. So the reason that we do, we just don't want to crawl every single word on this web page is because some of the words like likes, comments, likes, comments, they appear all the time, but they aren't really relevant. On this web page, the only relevant words that I'm looking for is pretty much these links right here. So we can ignore all the words like posted, September, all the crap we don't need, and beautiful soups going to allow us to do that. And the last thing we need is import operator, and that's um, whenever we make the final word count, we're going to have a dictionary. We're going to have the words, like, I don't know, programmer, status, and those are going to be the keys, and the values are going to be how many times they occurred. So it's going to say something like, um, like programming 18 times, by two times, something like that. So now let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is obviously make a function. And I'm going to be breaking up this program into three functions. The first function is just going to create a list of every single word on here. So that's what I'm doing first. And I'll explain to you guys the other functions when we get to them. But oh my oh my pudding pie but since this is our starting point what I want to do is just name it start why the heck not and pass it in a URL so actually what I can do actually I'll call that later don't want to really worry about it now alright so the first thing we need to do is we need to create a blank list so word list and then just set this equal to blank list and eventually what we're going to be doing is um, getting all the source code from the website and picking out word by word and throwing it in that list. So to connect to the web page, of course, request, get, and get pretty much means, all right, what do you want to get information from? Well, whatever URL we pass in, which is essentially going to be this URL. And again, like I said, you can pretty much do this for any web page. But I just don't want to like go to Craigslist or something, or else I'm going to get an email back. Uh, Bucky, you can't um, do that to our web page, and then they're going to sue me. So I'll just do it to my own for now. And if you guys want to crawl my web page, that's fine. I give you permission. Just don't like I don't know abuse it or anything. All right. So what this is going to do is it's going to connect to that URL or that web page, and this means pretty much just use it as plain text. Don't like uh pull it as any weird encrypted binary data or anything like that. So now that we have pretty much all the source code from the web page, what we're looking at is pretty much this. All of that crap. Now of course whenever we use beautiful soup, we need to convert that to a soup object. So take that source code that you just grabbed and throw it in here and now your soup object is something that you can actually work with. So what I want to do is I want to do this. And come on caps lock. So right now we're looking at all this crap and of course we don't just want to crawl all this or else we're going to get weird keywords like div, class, you know, img. We don't care about that. What we care about is only the text and these links right here. So let's go ahead and inspect this 
and see what property is unique to these links. And if I scroll up, you guys are going to see. So of course, whenever I highlight this, this is the link that we're looking for. So it says, okay, this href changes, so we can't really use that. The class, however, if we edit this, all of these links or all the important content has a class of index single listing titles. So let's go ahead and grab that. I just uh, cut it or you can copy it, whatever. And what I want to do is write this for post text. This is just a variable that because it's a text from each post in soup find all. Now find all, remember you says, okay, we're going to go through all that source code. What are you looking for? Well, first of all, it was a link. So it was a, and the next thing it needs is it pretty much says, okay, now I'm going to look at all the links. Now, what property do you want me to look for? Well, only grab the links with the class of index single listing titles. So now essentially what we have is all of these links right here. However, we have one problem. What we have is actually the entire, like all of it. So we have href, we have this part, we have this part, and we have the content that we need. Now, if we only want to pull out this good content, you know, kind of like uh, stealing the cream from the milk, we need to do this. So the content, which is basically what we're looking for, is equal to post text string. So what that's going to do is it's going to go through your entire source code, pull out all of the important links, and treat them as post text. Now post text string pretty much means only get the text that's inside here. Don't even worry about this HTML crap. So this is pretty much how you remove HTML from something. Probably could have just said that, but who cares? So now we have all the good stuff. However, we have one more problem. And I know this is kind of a lot of information, but it's important. So right now we have a bunch of sentences and we don't want the entire sentences for each one. We just want the words. So we, d we don't want um, all of this in a variable. We want to break it up into Ben and then stuck here all day. And those are the individual words because that's, that's what this program does. So in order to do that, we need one more variable and I'll just name it words and set it equal to content dot lower split. Actually, this one is lower two. Now the reason, so well, I'll explain what this does. So content is basically the entire sentence. So what we want to do first is a lowercase everything in that sentence. And that's just because if some people start a sentence with like I and uh, some people aren't using proper grammar or I don't know what's something in here. Like maybe they're talking about this guy, Richard Feynman. I have no idea who that is, but not everyone capitalizes things in the exact same way. So what we want to do just to make sure everything is consistent and we don't get any duplicate results is just lowercase everything and split basically splits up your string based on spaces. So it basically takes a sentence and splits it up into words. So that's why I have each word now in this variable. So now we can loop through it for each word in words. What do I want to do? Well, now that we have the individual words, we can just add it to our main word list. So word list, and of course, whenever you want to add something, use append. And of course, what are we appending or what are we adding to the list? We're adding each word. So now, actually I'll print this out real quick. Print each word. All right, so now if I run this, check it out. And nothing happens because I actually need to call this at some point in time. So that's the function that I want to call and I want to call for this URL. All right, so now 
give me some space and run this, check it out. What we did is we connected to that website and we got the source code. We broke it up into sentences or the good stuff and then we broke those sentences up into words and we now have a list of all of the words on the website. However, if we look closely at this, we have a couple problems. First of all, we have symbols that we don't need, like this OK has three dots after it. This thing, this isn't even a word, that's just a smiley face, but I mean, it followed our instructions, that's what we told it to do. And there's some other stuff here that's weird, like debatable has a, um, some symbols after it. So we need to clean that up. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be cleaning up all this stuff in the next tutorial and I'm gonna show you guys how to make a proper nicely perfectly working word counter so that's what we have to look forward to I'll see you then